In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw some basic Lewis structures within the realm of organic chemistry. So let's go over some basic things you need to know. Hydrogen can only form one bond. Elements like boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, they could form multiple bonds. Boron likes to form three bonds when it's in its neutral state. Now when it has a charge, it can deviate from this number. Carbon in its neutral state likes to form four bonds. Nitrogen likes to form two, I mean three, oxygen likes to form two, and the halogens like to form one. So like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those elements, they like to form one bond. They have seven valence electrons and they only need one more to get to eight. Sulfur likes to form two bonds, but sometimes it could form six. It has six valence electrons. It can either try to acquire two to get to eight, so in that case it's going to form two bonds, or it can give away its six valence electrons and form six bonds in the case of sulfate. The phosphorus, like nitrogen, likes to form three bonds. Silicon, like carbon, likes to form four bonds. But these are the most common elements that you're going to be dealing with in organic chemistry. So let's say if we want to draw the Lewis structure for methane. You know that carbon likes to form four bonds and hydrogen can only form one bond. So the only way to put this together is to do it like this. And so that is the Lewis structure of methane. What about this example? Methanol, CH3OH, a type of alcohol. How can we draw the Lewis structure for that molecule? So let's view the molecule from left to right. So we have a carbon, and that carbon has three hydrogens attached to it. And each hydrogen can only form one bond. Now the carbon is attached to an oxygen, and oxygen likes to form two bonds. So this is the typical structure of oxygen. It likes to form two bonds and it has two lone pairs. And then we have a hydrogen, and so this is the Lewis structure for methanol. So make sure you know this. Hydrogen likes to form one bond. Carbon likes to form four bonds. Nitrogen likes to form three bonds. And for elements that form three bonds, typically they have one lone pair. These are the general trends. There's always some exceptions, so keep that in mind. Now oxygen, which likes to form two bonds, has two lone pairs. And the halogens, like fluorine and chlorine and things like that, they like to form one bond, but they're going to have three lone pairs. Elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, they like to have eight electrons around them. Hydrogen is in the first row, so it can only hold a maximum of two electrons, and that's why it can only form one bond. Let's try another example. CH3, CH2, NH2. So go ahead and draw the Lewis structure for that molecule. So viewing it from left to right, we're going to start with the CH3. So we have a carbon attached to three hydrogen atoms. And then we have a CH2. So that's a carbon that's attached to two hydrogen atoms. And attached to that is an NH2. Now nitrogen likes to form three bonds. And hydrogen can only form one. So this nitrogen has three bonds, and typically it has one lone pair with those three bonds. So this is the structure of ethoamine. Now go ahead and try this one, ethyl chloride. Feel free to pause the video. So we're going to follow the same pattern. We have a CH3 attached to a CH2, and then that's attached to a chlorine atom. Now chlorine is a halogen, and typically they form one bond, and they're going to have two lone, I mean three lone pairs rather than two. And so this is the Lewis structure for ethyl chloride. Now let's work on another example. Dimethyl ether. Go ahead and draw the Lewis structure for that. So I'm going to start with the oxygen in the middle. Oxygen likes to form two bonds, and on each side we have a methyl group or CH3 group. And we know each of those carbons contain three hydrogens. And oxygen, when it has two bonds, 
it's going to have two lone pairs. And so that's the Lewis structure for dimethyl ether. Now what about this one, CH3CHO? How can we draw the Lewis structure for this molecule? So the left side, CH3, at this point we're pretty familiar with it. It's just a carbon with three hydrogens. Now this carbon needs four bonds, so we're going to draw another bond. And the next thing that it's attached to is a carbon atom. Now how can we draw CHO? Well, we can't draw it like this because hydrogen will have two bonds and that's not going to work. And we can't draw it this way because carbon will have four bonds. The only way in which we can make carbon to have four bonds and hydrogen to have one and oxygen to have two is to put a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen and connect the carbon directly to the hydrogen. As you can see, every element has their desired number of bonds. And so this is the Lewis structure for CH3CHO. This is a type of aldehyde, specifically acetaldehyde. This is how you spell the name. Aldehydes typically have this functional group that you see here. Next up is C2H4. Go ahead and try that. Draw the Lewis structure for that molecule. So how should we begin? Are the two carbons connected to each other or how, how do we even draw this thing? When you see something like this, draw the carbon atoms first. Now there's four hydrogens. The best thing to do is to split the number of hydrogens equally among the two carbons. You don't want to put three hydrogens on one carbon and one hydrogen on the other because the carbons are the same. So they're going to have the same attraction to those hydrogen atoms. The best thing to do is to draw the molecule of symmetry. So begin by putting two hydrogen atoms on each carbon. Now you know that carbon wants to have four bonds. And right now, each carbon atom has two. So the only way to make each carbon atoms have four bonds is to put a double bond in the middle. And so that is the structure of C2H4 also known as ethene. It's a type of alkene. So anytime you see a double bond between two carbon atoms, the functional group is an alkene. Now let's move on to our next example, and that is C2H2. Go ahead and try that one. So let's start with two carbon atoms, and we're going to put a hydrogen on each one. Now the only way for each carbon atom to have four bonds is to put a triple bond in the middle. And so this molecule is known as acetylene. And the functional group is an alkyne, which corresponds to a triple bond between two carbon atoms. Now what about this molecule, hydrazine? How can we draw the Lewis structure for it? Now this is going to be very similar to C2H4. So we're going to put the two nitrogen atoms in the middle and we're going to start by placing two hydrogen atoms on each nitrogen atom. Now we know that nitrogen likes to form three bonds. So right now each of them have two, which means that we need a single bond between the two nitrogen atoms. Now nitrogen likes to have one lone pair, so we can uh, draw it that way. So that's the structure of hydrazine. Now let's talk about what to do when you have charges. So I want you to draw these three molecules, CH3O-, CH3OH, and CH3OH2+. So let's start with a familiar example, one that we covered already, methanol. You know what? I'm not going to draw the CH3 part. I'm just going to leave it like this, CH3. Now the OH part is what I'm going to focus on. So we know that oxygen likes to form two bonds, and so it's going to have two lone pairs. But what's going to happen if we take off the hydrogen on the oxygen? The two electrons in this bond, they're going to be pulled back to the oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, and so it has a partial negative charge. And so when this bond breaks, 
those electrons will be returned to the more electronegative elements can be pulled by it. And so this oxygen is going to have three lone pairs as opposed to two. And now it has a negative charge. Now what about if the oxygen gains a hydrogen? What's going to happen? What we're going to do is react methanol with a hydrogen ion. Now we said that oxygen has a partial negative charge and so it's attracted to the positively charged hydrogen ion. And so it's going to use a lone pair to form a bond between the oxygen and the incoming hydrogen. And so we're going to get a structure that looks like this. I'm running out of space here. So this lone pair is gone, and those electrons are now in this bond. And so this oxygen has one lone pair left, but now it bears the positive charge. And so whenever you have an oxygen with a positive charge, note that it loses a lone pair to form a new bond. And when it has a negative charge, it gained a lone pair to break a bond. So as you can see, whenever you have charges, oxygen won't have two bonds. When it has a negative charge, it typically has one bond. When it has a positive charge, it typically has three bonds. But when it's neutral, it has its standard number of two bonds. So those are some things you want to keep in mind. But that's it for this video. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.